Political parties fielding six and more candidates in this election are eligible for party political broadcasts. Airtime is in proportion to the number of candidates fielded. This is the first of two programs. The speakers representing their parties are Mr. Lee Sen Lung from the People's Action Party, Associate Professor Daniel Goh from the Workers' Party, Mr. Lim Tian from the National Solidarity Party, Dr. Chi Sun Juan from the Singapore Democratic Party, Mr. Kenneth J. Ratnam from the Reform Party, Mr. Tan Ji Se from Singaporeans First, Mrs. Lina Chiam from the Singapore People's Party, and Mr. Harminder Pal Singh from the Singapore Democratic Alliance. The party fielding the smallest number of candidates will appear first, the party fielding the largest number last. Speaking for the Singapore Democratic Alliance is Mr. Harminder Pal Singh. Singapore for Singaporeans, a heart for the people. Thank you, dear residents of Pasir Is Punggol GRC, for supporting the SDA in the last two elections and giving us more than 55,000 of the votes in 2011. We have always been actively walking the ground for more than 10 years now and formulating action plans and policies to serve all of you better. In this election, we aspire to be your elected members of parliament and serve you to even greater heights. Singapore has come a long way since we achieved independence and we just celebrated our golden jubilee. A very happy SG50 to all of you. But all is not well in our country. There are many social issues that we face today and they are causing great pain and stress to all Singaporeans. Ladies and gentlemen, the time has come for us to attend to our people's needs and to think about the future Singapore that our children will live in. From this perspective, SDA has identified seven issues that will champion to achieve a better quality of life for you. They are, number one, the population white paper, which is trying to achieve 6.9 million population by 2030. Now, we are not against the high-end foreign talents and investors that help to improve our economy, nor the low-end foreign workers, but we are against those who are taking over the jobs of Singaporeans. Number two, the CPF and retirement age is another big issue, and we want the CPF funds to be returned to us at age 55. Number three, rising prices of HDB homes need to be brought under greater control. Number four, the cost of health care is becoming more unaffordable and we need to bring it down even further. Number five, our public transport system is overcrowded and totally unreliable. We need to do something about it. Number six, employment opportunities for local Singaporeans need to be looked into. And seven, we need a better and improved restructured education system in Singapore. It is time for change. SDA will fight for you to make our lives much better in Singapore, but we need your help to do so. This is about the rights as ordinary citizens of Singapore. We are ordinary people like you. Support us, want us to be your voice in parliament. Vote SDA in for a better life, happiness, prosperity and progress for the nation. Vote SDA for a Singapore for Singaporeans. Thank you. Representing the Singapore People's Party is Mrs. Lina Chiam. Good evening, my fellow Singaporeans. On the 11th of September, you have the chance to decide for yourselves if you want a better future for yourself and your family. Singaporeans face more difficulties today than they ever have. Life has not been easy for us. Our public transport system breaks down far too frequently despite the investments put into it. We have become more insecure because we might lose our jobs to foreigners despite all our hard work in school and after graduation. We are worried about when we can retire or if we have to keep working forever. We are frustrated when the government responds to our concerns half-heartedly. The PAP alone does not know what is best. We need change and need change now as there are many loopholes and insufficiencies that still exist. Take work permit rules for instance. The minimum qualifying salary for foreign professionals, managers and executives to obtain the employment pass is still far too low at 3,300. It must be raised to ensure we obtain candidates of professional quality who can really contribute to Singapore. 
At the current rate, even insurance firms can employ agents on the employment pass. The Singapore People's Party has a long record for actively speaking up in Parliament on the issues that matter to you. In the last four years, we have kept the government in check on many issues ranging from the CPF, overpopulation, transport, as well as the recent accounting lapses in government ministries and statutory boards. We are a proven party with an excellent track record in managing the Potong Pasir Town Council. For 27 years, I worked alongside Mr. Chiam Si Tong, the Singapore People's Party Secretary General, serving Potong Pasir residents with strong commitment, reliability and dedication. We ran the Potong Pasir Town Council operations with integrity, achieving a budget surplus for many years. We built many amenities, including 29 lifts for the community, all without government grants and without additional payment from our residents. We believe residents should not be held ransom by promises of upgrading works. Don't leave your future slow, solely into the hands of the PAP. Vote for the Singapore People's Party. Vote for our candidates in Potong Pasir, Mountbatten, Hong Kong North and Bishan Topayo GRC. Let us move into the future together. Thank you and good night. Speaking for Singaporeans first is Mr. Tan Ji Se. Dear fellow Singaporeans, a year ago, a group of us Singaporeans got together to form a new political party called Singaporeans First. We were concerned that government policies have deprived Singaporeans of their rightful place in their own country. Our people are unhappy. Social tension is high. The fundamental cause is the massive influx of foreign workers. This is the direct result of PAP's economic strategy of growth at all costs. The huge influx of foreign workers has broken families, taken away jobs jobs and space from Singaporeans and shattered their self-esteem. We are not anti-foreigners. We recognize that foreigners play an important role in the economy, but we do not want any Tom, Dick or Harry to come in with ease and in such big numbers. Current policy opens the door so wide that they come in huge numbers when our infrastructure is not ready to accommodate them like housing, public transport, schools, public parks. In past 10 years, more than 1 million foreign workers have been allowed to come into Singapore, or an average of 100,000 a year. As a result, house prices have shot up, public transport breaks down frequently, and space for Singaporeans has been intruded. Social relations have also been strained. This is irresponsible. We are for responsible immigration. In our pursuit of economic growth, we must be fair to Singaporeans and not discriminate them in terms of job placement, wage levels and space. We make no apology that we are advocating priority to Singaporeans. Every country gives priority to its citizens except Singapore. Our party has proposed a safety net and social investment program that will restore lost jobs to Singaporeans, giving them priority and job security. We will also restore the rightful place of citizens with priority in schools and businesses. We will grow local enterprises by issuing three more licenses each for banks and telcos and give generous support grants to startups for by the young. We will reduce poverty from the existing 30% to below 10% as in first world countries. We will be generous in helping the middle class by not requiring means tests. We will de-emphasize position, income and wealth as criteria of success. We will ensure better work-life balance and enhance the spirit of mutual help. Our $6 billion safety net will be financed by returns on our investments, which exceed the required amount by $2 billion a year. Hence, our $6 billion safety net will not bankrupt Singapore. With our strategy of growth with a heart for all Singaporeans, we will achieve an egalitarian society with a broad middle class and will stand tall and proud among First World nations. That will be truly Majula Singapore. Representing the Reform Party is Mr. Kenneth J. Ratnam. Dear fellow Singaporean, for this G, we must ask why is Lee Sian Lung in such a hurry to call an election? The truth is that the PAP know they have failed. They have run out of ideas for bringing you a better life. They only know how to ask you to be self-reliant and tough, to put up with a bad job, to go without. 
in truth, they only have one idea, to bring in cheaper and cheaper foreign labor to generate economic growth. This, in turn, drives your wages down and puts a squeeze on every aspect of our society. Over the last four years, Reform Party has worked with you on the ground and on national issues. That is why we ask, if our economy is doing so well, then why is it that our elderly cannot afford to retire and roam the streets collecting cardboard? Why is it the sick cannot afford health care and hospitals where there are not enough beds? Why is it only an elite 10% of Singaporeans can afford housing with a share in the land? Why can't the PAP return your CPF to you at 55? Before you vote, I urge you to ask yourself one more question. Where is all the money going? Lee Sian Lung says Singaporeans have to be self-reliant and tough. But this toughness does not extend to our leaders and the artificial aristocracy they have created. The government's own figures show it has it runs enormous surpluses and has huge reserves. Yet it says that if we citizens want safety nets or more spending on health and education, then taxes will have to rise. This is simply not true. Reform Party promises to secure a fairer share of the national wealth for Singaporeans. We want to introduce an old age pension, child benefit for mothers, a minimum wage, a cap on foreign worker numbers, abolish MediShield life premium for over 65s and under 18s, return CPF at 55, give you the chance to own the freehold of your HDB and a stake in GIC and Tomasic. The total extra spending for this will be less than 20% of the government's real surplus annually. But that 20% will be taxpayer money finally invested as it should be in our only natural resource, our citizens. Reform Party has assembled a team of candidates who all share the same desire to build a more vibrant, more caring and more robust Singapore. They are all elites, elites of the heart. We promise that if you send reform candidates into parliament, that together or individually, they will be fearless in demanding transparency and accountability on your behalf. We know from past experience that Lee Sian Lung stubbornly does not heed the calls to him to just listen to his citizens. Is that too much to ask? Vote wisely, vote for reform, and make him listen to you. On election day, vote for a brighter tomorrow today. Vote for the Reform Party. Here is Dr. Chi Sun Juan from the Singapore Democratic Party. Fellow Singaporeans, in Singapore today, you are struggling to meet with your living expenses. You are competing in an overcrowded city to get a job or simply to hold on to yours. You have to work your entire life to pay your HDB loan. And when you retire, you cannot get your CPF savings back. We understand your concerns. Unfortunately, the PAP doesn't. It ignores your views. The late Dr. To Chin Chai, former Deputy Prime Minister and founding PAP chairman, once said, quote, when the PAP and the opposition were 26-25, the government was sensitive to issues and was circumspect. When you've got a strong opposition, there's consultation, unquote. The SDP wants to be that strong opposition so that the government will listen to you and be more consultative. But we don't want to be just a strong opposition. We also want to be a constructive opposition to provide alternative ideas and solutions for Singapore. In other words, we want to give you a reason to vote for the SDP, not just against the PAP. This is why we've drawn up a set of workable and comprehensive alternative policies in areas such as housing, population, health care, etc. These papers can be read on our website, usdp.org. We have put in much time and effort into these alternative policies because, one, we want a people healthy and happy, not an island overcrowded with unqualified foreigners competing with us for jobs. To this end, the SDP will push for policies where employers give priority to Singaporeans when it comes to hiring. Two, we want to make our housing truly affordable, where our HDB flats don't cost us a lifetime to pay off. Three. We want our retirees to live secure and dignified lives with all their CPF savings. For this to happen, we will work to abolish the minimum sum scheme so that you can get your CPF savings back in full. Four, we want Singaporeans to have a better work-life balance where our people are not so stressed. To do this, wages must rise in tandem with the cost of living in Singapore. 
We cannot be the most expensive city in the world and then have wages stagnate for our people. Five, we want to make our system transparent and hold the PAP accountable. We cannot and must not continue to write the PAP a blank check. This is dangerous and unhealthy for our nation's future. For you to live more secure and prosperous lives, you need a competent, constructive and compassionate voice in Parliament. The SDP team is dedicated to be that voice and to ensure that the government listens to you. The SDP has plans to improve your quality of life and for you and your family to be happier. To achieve a better tomorrow, vote SDP. Thank you. Speaking for the National Solidarity Party is Mr. Lim Tien. My fellow Singaporeans, this election presents Singapore with the clearest political choice of half a century. It is your choice between two fundamentally different philosophies of government and Singapore's future. It is about whether Singaporeans deserve better from their government. Over the years, our opponents have distilled the principle of government down to one phrase, profit at all cost. Our national transportation has been privatized. Our essential train and bus services are in the hands of the few, accountable only to their shareholders. Singaporeans are denied the right to a minimum wage but cheap foreign labour is allowed in in large numbers. Singaporeans are told that there is little that government can do when they lose their lower and middle income jobs to foreigners, that this is globalisation at work. The promise to return CPF personal life savings at age 55 has been broken. Today, Singaporeans are having to live with the consequences of our opponents' costly social and economic experiments, trains that break down regularly, a grossly inadequate number of hospital beds, our highly educated middle-income professionals having to retrench because of, so, of job losses to so-called foreign talent. The most expensive city in the world where the relentless rising cost of living punishes everyone except the rich. Their policies are tearing apart the fabric of this country. Under this government, the Singaporean has become a tenant in his own country, with a government that works against him and not for him. A government that is happy to subsidize the education of foreign students but does little to help that Singaporean father and mother put their own child through our university. A government that is happy to find a foreigner a job, but does little to help that Singaporean keep his job. A government that has issued him with a bad CPF life savings policy that has no maturity date. We, the National Solidarity Party, have a totally philosoph different philosophy of government, one which serves every Singaporean better. It is the right of the Singaporean to have a minimum wage. It is the duty of government to see to it that the Singaporean has priority over a foreigner for a Singapore job. It is the duty of government to use our vast financial resources to help their Singaporean father and mother put their children through university. We will fight for the CPF personal life savings to be returned to Singaporeans as originally promised, so that Singaporeans will have enough to live comfortably in their later years, so that the Muslim family can use some of this money if needed to go on the Hajj or Umrah. We will fight to narrow the massive inequality gap in Singapore. To that end, we will fight in Parliament for the right of every Singapore family, which does not live in private property, to buy at Cost Plus, a HDB apartment, and also another HDB apartment on the resale market. We will always keep faith with our fellow Singaporeans, who are our only natural resource and who built this nation. September the 11th is polling day. We ask you to exercise your great moral responsibility to change the direction of this country and to vote for the National Solidarity Party because Singaporeans deserve better. Thank you. Representing the Workers' Party is Associate Professor Daniel Goh. Good evening, voters. In 2011, many of you supported our call to move Singapore towards a First World Parliament and send seven elected Workers' Party members to Parliament. We have seen the result. Today, we have a more responsive government that is more sensitive to the struggles of the people. We have seen policy changes responding to the needs of Singaporeans. But the journey towards a First World Parliament has only just begun. We cannot let down our guard now. We must continue our journey to protect our future and the future of our children. To protect our future, you have to further entrench your power and your rights in Parliament. You need to take charge of your own future. But this is not possible if we have an imbalanced parliament 
with an overwhelming majority of ruling party MPs. This election is a landmark election in a new era in Singapore. Our formula for success in the last 50 years was to allow the ruling party to monopolise power, to exercise control over every aspect of our society and set the direction for us. This was largely based on the mentality that we only have a small talent pool that could lead Singapore. But times have changed. Our talent pool has vastly expanded through education and exposure. Many talented Singaporeans today excel in their own fields and gain international recognition. However, our enterprises struggle to take off in the global arena and our workers struggle with productivity. This is not for lack of talent, but because Singaporeans are not empowered to seize our future for ourselves. For Singapore to become an outstanding smart nation in the next 50 years, we must build and nurture confident professional business and people sectors, unfettered by unhealthy political monopoly. To do this, people must be able to think out the box, people should be able to express themselves freely and debate issues within known limits as a multi-racial and multi-religious society. People must also feel secure and be assured of their rights against unreasonable and disproportionate actions from the government and political leaders. We have the opportunity now with the general election to take that step, to become such an outstanding nation. We can empower ourselves through a parliament that truly represents the diversity of Singapore society for our future as a nation. We are the masters of Singapore. Our political leaders should serve us and facilitate empowerment of the people, not encourage subservience and groupthink. You have to decide whether having more ruling party MPs resulting in an imbalanced parliament is in the best interest of the future of Singapore and your children. Your vote is a signal to the ruling party that it cannot do what it wants without taking you seriously. It will signal to what extent the ruling party can deprive you of your power to participate in the policy-making process in the name of acting in your best interest. Before 2011, the ruling party cruised along with policies that led to escalating cost of living, employment and retirement insecurity, and strained infrastructure due to runaway immigration. Your vote changed the course. But change for a better future is only just beginning. Singapore is one of the richest countries in the world. But Singaporeans still feel stressed and disempowered at every stage of our lives. This is not right. The government is planning for a 6.9 million population to solve the problems at hand. This is heading towards the wrong course. We have to change this. Your vote is your power. Use it to empower yourself. We understand that to exercise the power of your vote, you need to have an alternative party deserving your support. The Workers' Party is your credible choice. We are a rational, responsible and respectable party. We do not oppose for the sake of opposing and we take a balanced approach to politics. We have worked hard to offer a slate of capable candidates, balanced between seniority and youth, experience and idealism, but all united in seeking the empowerment of Singaporeans. You can empower yourself to make decisions for your own future. Vote Workers' Party. Empower your future. Good night. And here is Mr Lee Sien Long from the People's Action Party. My fellow Singaporeans, in SG50, we celebrated our journey from third world to first. In a few days' time, we make a vital choice about our future. Our pioneers started us off on this journey. 50 years ago, Singaporeans rallied behind Mr Lee Kuan Yew and his team and put their faith and their future in the hands of the PAP. Together, they achieved the impossible and built Singapore. That's why I made the Pioneer Generation package to honour the sacrifices of our founding generation. For the past 50 years, the PAP has worked with you, for you, 
and for Singapore. We've done this consistently for decades. We continue to do this in this term of government. We've made Singapore a nation of homeowners. Since the last election, HDB launched more than 100,000 flats for Clementi Towns. We kept flat prices stable and increased our grants, making flats more affordable. With less than $1,000 a month, you can afford a two-room flat. 1,800 such families have done so. We are transforming every corner of this land, from Changi to Marina Bay to Jurong. We've built beautiful new towns like Bongol 21 and rejuvenated old ones like Dawson. We will soon have 1,000 more buses on the road, and downtown line two will open by the end of the year. We still have work to do, but buses and trains are becoming less crowded and more convenient. We kept healthcare affordable, accessible, and of high quality. MediShield Life provides every Singaporean with lifelong healthcare insurance. CHAS helps our lower income with medical bills. Ng Teng Fong Hospital has opened in Jurong, and the next new hospital is coming up in Sengkang. We created more opportunities and pathways for our children. We expanded places in preschools and in our polytechnics and universities. We moderated the inflow of foreign workers and tightened rules on fair employment to ensure a level playing field for Singaporeans. We launched Skills Future so people can improve themselves and advance their careers all their lives. And we grew our economy to create new and fulfilling jobs for all. You helped us to make these policies. In our Singapore Conversation, or OSC, 50,000 Singaporeans discussed our hopes and aspirations. Your views and inputs improve major policies like CPF, housing, and health care. In this way, together, we brought Singapore to SG50. The PAP kept our promises. You played your part by contributing energies and ideas, helping your fellow men, and doing your best for Singapore. So tonight, I'm asking you for your mandate to take Singapore beyond SG50. SG50 is not a destination, but a new beginning. Let us make the next 50 years better than the past 50. We can be confident of our future. Many opportunities lie ahead. We are located in fast-growing Asia. Our economy is strong. Our people are skilled and well-educated. But we must expect challenges too. We worry about ISIS and terrorism. Hundreds of Malaysians and Indonesians have gone to the Middle East to fight for ISIS. A few Singaporeans have also gone there. When they return, they'll bring back the virus and the violence and threaten Singapore's security. We worry about our region. Singaporeans may enjoy shopping in Johor Bahru with a ringgit three to one to the Sing dollar. But it is bad for us if our neighbors suffer political unrest and uncertainty. Domestically, we're upgrading our economy and helping our SMEs to adapt. The recent drastic swings in stock markets in many countries show how fragile confidence is in the global economy. Economic troubles may lie ahead, and a worldwide economic slowdown will surely affect us too. To respond to our challenges and opportunities, we need a capable and strong government. When Mr. Lee Kuan Yew passed away in March, it drew us all together and made us feel strongly our Singaporean identity. We were reminded that we got here through outstanding leadership, working with one united people. We are Team Singapore, leaders who keep faith with the people and people who trust and work with their leaders, the lions and the lion-hearted. 
We must stay united for Singapore to succeed, and that depends on all of us in Team Singapore. Next week, when you vote, you are choosing the government of Singapore. Every seat will be contested, many fiercely. Whoever wins in your constituency will run your town council. Whichever party wins enough seats will form the government. The PAP is fielding a team which I hope will include the next generation of leaders for Singapore. I ask for your support to put together the best possible team to serve you, a capable and multiracial team with different skills and backgrounds and the commitment and the passion to lead Singapore. Then we can secure our future beyond me and my present colleagues. In this election, we will set the direction for Singapore beyond SG50. What sort of Singapore will we be? We aim to be a nation where the elderly lead dignified lives, where the middle income have their burdens shared, where we care for the weak and the poor, and no one is left behind, and where the young have every encouragement and hope to do well. Just on Sunday, I met Mr. and Mrs. Chien, who run a chicken stall at a market in Pongol South. They told me how proud they were of their son, who had graduated from NTU and was now studying music in a conservatory in Vienna. When looking for PAP candidates, I found Amrin Amin. His parents took on multiple jobs to put their children through school. Amrin made it to law school and became a promising young lawyer. Now, he wants to give back and help others to succeed. Our self-help groups have passionate volunteers, like Ravi Supaya. His parents were uneducated, and he grew up in a kampong, catching spiders and chasing chickens. But in secondary two, Ravi persuaded his parents to let him attend Sinda's tuition classes. Ravi did well in school, entered a polytechnic, and went on to graduate from NUS and earn a master's from NTU. Now he volunteers at SINDA, coaching polytechnic students in maths and computer programming. These real-life personal stories tell me that we are on the right path. Whatever our anxieties and challenges, we can overcome them together. We will create bright opportunities, equip our people to seize them, and bring up our children with a confidence and a drive to succeed. That's the Singapore we want to build with you, for you, and for future generations. In this election, through the excitement and noise of the campaign, please remember what is at stake, our future. I thank you for supporting me and my government. Please vote for me and my PAP team in the elections so that together we can do the best for ourselves and our children. The PAP will always work with you, for you, for Singapore. Good night.